with the word of wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Start with Mark 13, 23. But take ye heed. In other words, listen. Behold, I have foretold you all things. And indeed, Jesus did tell us all things. Matthew 24, verse 36. Now I'm going to set up this lesson of Genesis chapter 6 regarding Noah and the flood. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Now this is referring to when the hour of temptation begins. The end of this dispensation of time. No one knows. Not even Jesus in the flesh knew. Only the Father knows. Verse 37. But as the days of Noe, or Noah, as you can reference in the Strong's Hebrew 5146, meaning Noach, which is the patriarch of the flood, or Noah. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, as it will be in the end. So with the word of wisdom, let's continue with Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Verse 2, That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now the sons of God, if you have a companion Bible, you can learn more about this in Appendix 23. If you are a son of God, you are created by God. All are created by God. A son of God is basically an angel. There are positive and there are negative. The fallen angels are those who chose not to be born of woman, not to be born of the flesh. In other words, they left their habitation or heaven and they took wives of which they chose. These sons of God that they're speaking of here saw the daughters of men and they took wives of which they chose. Now we learned back in chapter 2, verse 24, what the purpose of man and woman is, and also what defines marriage. We go to verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave, or join, unto his wife. And there we have it. Wife signifies marriage. And they shall be one flesh. Well, what happens when you become one flesh? You can see, all souls must be born. Flesh begats flesh. So they took wives of which they chose. As we learned in Matthew 24, giving and taking in marriage. So these sons of God were fallen angels, is what they're speaking of here. This was the first eruption. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. This generation of man from this point on will be a hundred and twenty years. Nobody lives, for the most part, over a hundred and twenty years. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Giants here is referring to the Nephilim. Nephilim, the root, is nephal, or to fall, or to be cast down. For more information, for a deeper study, go to Appendix 25 in the Companion Bible. And to continue... And they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now this, if you reference 
Appendix 25, you will find that the men of renown is referencing the Greek gods, the mythological Greek gods. They are not mythological. They were Nephilim, men of renown, men of old, powerful, giants, mighty men, as it were. Look into Appendix 25 to gain a deeper understanding. Verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagined of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. These fallen angels fell to earth, not being born of woman, not being born of water, woman. Let's go to Job 38, starting with verse 1. Then the Lord, Yahweh, answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsels by words without knowledge? Question. Gird up now thy loins like a man. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Like whatever you see, foundations of the earth, he's referring to the catabol. Reference Genesis verse 1 and 2, the overthrow, the catabol. Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Question. Or who hath stretched the light upon it? Question. Whereupon... Or the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? And this is why we came here. Verse 7. Where the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This is in the first age, eon of time. This is when everything was perfect. All the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. It was perfect. Everybody was happy before Satan rebelled and caused what is called the catabol, the overthrow. Back to Genesis 6, verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he hath made man on earth. In other words, he was sorry. He didn't like it. And it grieved him in his heart. He saw all this evil happening, all the, the fallen angels coming to corrupt his beautiful creations. And it grieved him in his heart. 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the earth, for it repenteth me that I have made them. He was not happy. Everything he created was being corrupted. Verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. He was perfect in his generations. This means he did not crossbreed. There were no hybrids. He did not mix with the fallen angels. 10. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. It was everywhere. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All, doesn't say most, all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth, saving Noah and his. Verse 13, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Pitch is a, um, a coating, kind of a black tar. It's to waterproof it. So he's taken, making this gopher wood and waterproofing it. Verse 15. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it, 30 cubits. It's believed that cubit is about 25 inches, which would make 300 cubits equal to about 625 feet. 50 cubits would be equal to about 104 feet. And 30 cubits, approximately 62.5 feet. So this thing was big. 625 feet by 104 feet wide, 62 and a half feet tall. That's a six-story building. That's one big hunk of boat. Verse 16. And a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cupid shalt thou finish it above. So he left a window for light. 
but think spiritually here also. At the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. This is three stories. How many ages are we talking about? Second Peter, all throughout the word of God? Three. Or as you can even look at in time. There was, there is, and will be. Past, present, future. Three stories. Verse 17, And behold, I, even I, emphatically he says, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. Now remember, the end days shall be as in the times of Noah. And this he's saying, I bring a flood of waters, where the end times this will be a flood of lies. To destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life, from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Again, as in the days of Noah, this will happen in this generation, the generation of the fig tree, which began in 1948, when Israel became a nation. Verse 18, But with thee will I establish my covenant, my promise, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. That's his promise, and thou shalt come into the ark. Now in this case, we're talking about a physical ark where they're going to go into. Come into my ark, thy sons, thy wives, and sons, his family. The ark being the protection. Verse 19. And of every living thing of all flesh. That's very important. We, have, we can't read over that. And of every living thing of all flesh. All flesh. We're going to get back to that. Two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark. To keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come into thee, to keep them alive. Now keep in mind, this is two of all flesh. All races of people are also flesh. Here we go. Verse 21. And take thou unto thee, of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and that shall be for the food for thee, and for them. 22, to close out the chapter, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him. So did he. Let's go back to verse 19. This is rather important. Many will miss this point. And of every living thing of all flesh, now this is all flesh. There is animal flesh, there's fish, there's fowl, and there is human flesh. All flesh. Chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Noah's family stayed clean. They did not mix with the Nephilim. 2. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, seven being spiritual completeness, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, seven and two. So clean by seven, not clean by two. Male and female. Verse 3. Of fowls, also of the air, by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. 4. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Forty being the number of probation. And we continue. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord Yahweh commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. 600. Six. That's a kind of an important number. 600. Okay. Verse 7. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, 
and of fowls, and everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Verse 11. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of the heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. 13. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife, and three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They, and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, and every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein the breath of life, all flesh. This gets over read, many misses. There were eight Adamic souls. Verse 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord, Yahweh, shut him in. He shut him in. He sealed him. This is also a reference to the seal of God. Yahweh shut him in, sealed into the ark. What is the ark of the end times? The truth. The word of truth. God's word. Learn it. Put on the gospel armor. Ephesians chapter 6. Get the seal of God. Go to Revelation 5. Shows who can loose that. Only Jesus Christ can loose this. Ask. Matthew 7, 7. Ask and you shall receive. Otherwise, you will have the mark of the beast. In this final generation, all will have one of the two, the positive or the negative, the negative being the mark of the beast, which is the deception. The deception is that Satan comes disguised as Jesus Christ. Do not fall for this. This is the flood of lies, the deception. The positive being the seal of God, knowing the truth knowing that Satan comes as Jesus Christ. Verse 17, And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bear up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. The ark was lifted. Huh. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went unto the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail. The mountains were covered. Now, this flood, it doesn't say whether this was covering the entire earth, or if this was a large region where the, the eruption happened, where the fallen angels came down to defile the bloodline from which Jesus Christ would come. Verse 21, And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. 22, And in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died, and every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And they that were with him in the ark. Get that. It wasn't just Noah and the eight Adamic souls. They. Got it? 24, to close out the chapter, And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. Now in the solar time, 
30 days is a perfect month. Lunar is 28. We don't go by lunar. Solar, 30. So 150 is 5 months. 5 months is also equal to the hour of temptation. The time was shortened. Go to Revelation chapter 9, verse 5 for documentation. Or go to Mark 13, verse 20. Thank you for listening and thank you for studying God's word. God bless. Be good.